Hola, welcome to Butterfly Spanish. Me llamo Ana, and in today's lesson, we're going to learn the letters B and V that are in Spanish B. B, B, and V are in Spanish B. First, we're going to go through the names of the letters in Spanish because in different parts of Latin America we, we call it uh, with different names, we give them different names and then we're going to go to some examples to try to understand maybe some rules that might affect the sound of these letters and after we're going to, I'm going to read you a poem I wrote in which I use a lot of B's in Spanish and so you'll be the judge and say okay what is the sound of those two crazy letters in Spanish well vamos a empezar let's start and first let's go with the fun names of these letters so in English you say B and V if I say for example beach I like to go to the beach okay it's beach but if I say oh I have a dress and it's a velvet dress. I don't say velvet dress, right? But when I started learning English, I used to say I, I like velvet. I like velvet. Oh no, I like velvet. Very classy, very like soft, you know? In Spanish, a little bit more rough. It's B. B. See my, my lips? B. As in beso. A kiss is beso. Okay, well, vamos a empezar con los Nombres. First name. We call this, a lot of people call this B y V. B y V. B, V. We also call it B grande. Big B. Big B and B chica. B grande, big B, y B chica small b. Some people also call it tall b. B alta, alta, tall b. B corta, short b, like me, short. B alta, b corta. But my favorite name and the first name I learned for these letters was the fun one. Uh, and you're going to memorize it because it's really funny. And so we call this B, B de burro. <laughs> B de burro. And this B, B de vaca. So for example, if you're reading a, if you're writing a letter and you say, oh, how do you say, for example, a town I know in Mexico is called Cuernavaca, right? Oh, how do you spell that? With B de burro? Oh, B de vaca. <laughs> so you say, oh, with B de vaca. Right? So burro is B as in donkey. You see this animal is a donkey. B as in burro. This is the B as in burro. And this is the V as in vaca. B de burro. B de vaca. <laughs> Do you understand now? So whenever you're writing something, you can say, okay, it's B de burro o B de vaca. Oh, it's B de burro. Okay, B de burro. You remember the B de burro y B de vaca. Uh, <clears throat> well, those are the names, okay? Now, we're going to go through some words. A lot of people tell me that the sound is not the same. So, oh, I forgot to tell you. This is B as in donkey, and this is B as in vaca. Donkey is burro, y vaca is cow. <laughs> burro, vaca. I like both. My favorite animals are burro and vaca. Um, although these probably have like derogatory meanings in Spanish. If you say, oh, it's bien burro. It's like he's very donkey. It means like he's a little bit like, uh, I don't know. He doesn't pick up things fast. Mm, like that, yeah. 
Uh, we don't say that, it's bien bacano, so it's burro. But don't say that because it's not nice and you don't want to be mean. I don't like my students to be mean to other people. So just remember, burro, ve de burro, ve de vaca. Okay, let's forget about those animals now. Um, so we're going to go now with some uh, words, palabras, in which we use B y V, o B de burro y B de vaca. Mm -hmm. A lot of the students tell me, I tell them, oh, um, I don't know how to pronounce that B and V. And I say, well, it's not V, it's B. Uh, and then I say, it's the same sound, it's B. And then when I'm speaking, it's like, you see? You see, you, you pronounce it differently. You said it differently. And it's like, oh, well, I don't know. I just say B. But my students keep saying I pronounced it differently. And so then I spend many nights without sleeping and thinking, oh, why am I? Why do I sound different? Why do I say maybe I am very classy and I say B and V? But I'm not. No, I'm not very classy. So then after many nights, without sleeping, then I realized, oh yeah, maybe, no, that's not true. I, based on, on, on some sort of resources, I checked in uh, my experience teaching Spanish. The sound of the B, sometimes it, it might depend on other factors, such as what letters are around the B, the B. Whether or not the B is starting a word, it's within a word. It's in the beginning of the sentence is in the middle of the sentence and how fast you're speaking, okay? So first we're going to review these, these words and then we're going to read uh, my, my um, epic poem. <clears throat> and so, for example, if I say burro, burro, bailarín, this is dancer, bailarín, besar, to kiss, besar, to kiss, beso, a kiss, beso, and bigote, mustache, bigote, okay? I'm starting this, the, the word with a B, so my sound is stronger, bigote, mustache, beso, you see my lips kind of close, and say the word, beso, it's strong, but if I say it in the middle, for example, after the M, which, ha which, ha which happens a lot in Spanish, the sound might sound a little slightly um, softer. For example, I say cambiar, cambiar, to change. Emborracharse, to get drunk. Do you get drunk? I don't get drunk. Emborracharse. Embustero, you know, it's like a sneaky liar. Those people, like, you don't want to be an embustero. I don't want to be embustera. Embustero. Embobado. Embobado is when you're staring at something. Like, you see, like, like you, like, huh? see? And you're staring at something really, like, really, really gets in your mind. Embobado. So do you see what is the difference? Maybe you notice it when I'm pronouncing it. Maybe I'm not conscious about, uh, of it. But if I start the word, the, the sound comes very strong. But if it's in the middle, because I require my tongue and my palate and my lips to go to the M before the B, then it's really hard if I am going to speak fast or something, say, cambiar. See, I'm not going to say, yo me cambio de ropa. No, you probably don't want to sound like that. You'll say, yo me cambio de ropa. A little bit softer, because it's in the middle. The same happens with the B de vaca. If I say, vaca, vaca, la vaca. Vainilla, vanilla, vainilla. I don't say, vainilla. I say vainilla, vanilla. And I say vampiro, vampire. I don't say vampiro. No, I say vampiro. A mí me gustan los vampiros. ¿Te gustan los vampiros? Tal vez no. 
dan miedo. Uh. <laughs> vanidad. Vanity. I'm very vain. Very vain. Vanidad. Vanity. Vela. Candle. Vela. Same thing. I'm starting to pronounce a word. The sound is stronger. But when it's in the middle, <clears throat> for example, when I say convenir, convenir, because it's next to an N, this sound is softer. Convenir, convenir. Why? Because the, my mouth, the muscles of my mouth, in that box, my muscles require to pronounce the N. And so it is difficult to say uh, convenir, convenir. No, we say it fast. We say conven convenir, convenir, okay? Convivir. Envidia. Enviar. Envenenar. Envenenar to poison someone, you know? You don't do that. Envenenar to poison someone. Enviar to send. For example, envíame un mensaje de texto. Send me a text message. Envíame un mensaje de texto. Uh, envidia is... Oh, env envi and by or envy envy not invite uh, ow um convivir is like when you get together and like share the cake and the party and you have fun it's convivir yo convivo con mis amigos mucho no i i get together with my friends convivir convenir convenient convenir but i don't say convenir I say convenir, which sounds softer than where uh, we pronounced it here. Is this clear? Maybe it is not clear. If it's clear, great. If it's not clear, send me a message and subscribe to my channel. Now we're going to go to the next example. So I wrote this because I used many Bs. <clears throat> and so it's a very nice poem. I call it poem. It's a very nice creation. And I'm going to read it at a normal pace, and then you will see, oh, Ana pronuncia la B y la V de manera diferente. She pronounces in a different way these letters. That's, you are the judge, because I'm going to pronounce them in a normal pace, as, as a native speaker would do. So, for example, el viento soplaba fuerte en el verde valle de Monampac. The wind blew strongly in the green valley of Bonampak. Bonampak is a very nice place, uh, a pyramid uh, place uh, in Chiapas. Los bailarines embobados gritaban y observaban los, las hojas del bosque, coma, que el viento barría. The dancers staring and screaming looked at the leaves of the wood that the wind swept. Isn't that very, very romantic? Qué romántico! <laughs> Qué romántico! Okay. Um, yo bromeaba. I joked. I always joke. Yo bromeaba. Ana bromea mucho. Ana jokes a lot. Yo bromeaba y besaba al bailarín. I joked and kissed the dancer. Ah. Yo bromeaba y besaba. I kissed the dancer, al bailarín. No conviví con él. I didn't really have a... I didn't get together with him a lot. Uh, <clears throat> I was envious and I poisoned him. No conviví con él. Uh, that means no conviví con él is we didn't have a time together uh, many times. Like we didn't get together many times. We didn't share uh, different getting togethers with our friends. You know, we didn't know each other really. It's convivir. No conviví is we didn't. It's a very tricky word. No conviví con él. Okay, look at the dictionary, but it's something like you, I didn't get together with him a lot. I was 
envious and I poisoned him. That, that's not very nice, but I wrote it because then me daba envidia y lo envenené. Me daba envidia y lo envenené. If you see, my, the muscles of my mouth might sound in a, little bit, uh, a little bit different in each word. Why? Because it depends on the speed I'm using to, to give a speech or to read a text. It depends on whether the M or the N is next to the B or the V. And so all those factors really affect the pronunciation of the B because your tongue cannot go quickly inside your tongue and your lips like closing to pronounce the B sound. Now, I checked many sources, dictionaries, grammar books, and none of them say the sound of these words is different. It, they actually say the opposite. They say it's the same sound. Now, a lot of friends of mine from Latin America or students have told me, they tell me, oh, we pronounce it different. It might be the case, but if you go on vacation, if you're speaking to someone in Spanish and you pronounce it like I'm saying, B, it's not a problem. If you pronounce it B, well, I don't think I will get bothered by that. I'll be like, oh no, that's not V, it's B, or that's not B, it's V. You see, it's very kind of a, I don't know, I don't find it very, like it's not important. The thing is, you have to be aware that is the, that the B and the V is not as strict as it is in English, that you have to say B and V. In Spanish, it's not that strict. You can say B, but if you come across saying V, nobody's going to say, do anything to you. Everything will be fine, I promise you. And if someone tells you something mean and complain about your pronunciation of the B in Spanish, send them to me, okay? You know what? Go and speak to my teacher, Anna, and, 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 and really like talk to her and you guys decide what you're gonna do. Send them to me, okay? Because it's not very nice. You're making an effort by learning another language. They cannot complain about the B and the B. What's the problem? What's the big deal? So sleep well, no, no problem. Everything is going to be fine. Just remember, B and B in Spanish is B. Okay, is that clear? I hope it is clear. Clear, <laughs> my pronunciation is bad today, sorry. Uh, espero que todo haya estado claro. I hope everything was clear. And if you have any questions, subscribe to my channel and send me a message and I'll reply. And gracias por ver mi canal. And thank you for watching Butterfly Spanish. And nos vemos pronto. Bye.